Hello everyone and welcome back to the studio here in Northumberland. It's been a while, uh, but today what I'm going to do is a watercolour pencil painting. I say painting, painting, because it will be a painting, not a drawing. Uh, and that's the picture that I'm going to do. Whoops. More or less what I'm going to do. And just like any watercolour painting, because that's what it is, remember, just like any watercolour painting, I'm going to do my outline drawing first. And here I've got my tin of pencils. And I've already got out the ones that I'm going to use for this. Um, as you can see, a fairly scruffy tin, because I use a, a pen knife or a knife to sharpen the pencils rather than a pencil sharpener, because a pencil sharpener will kind of like tend to crumble the end as you're sharpening it and you're wasting paint basically. Also, if you're using a knife to sharpen it, you've got lots of different lovely edges to use the side of the pencil. So yeah, that's a little quick tip. Now what I'm going to do is actually, I'll get my glasses out. And in this case, all I need my glasses for is to read the silly names on the pencils. Because there are some silly names. This one, for instance, for the outline drawing, I'm going to use, well, <laughs> light blue. These are Lyra pencils, Lyra watercolour pencils, but they're called Rembrandt, Lyra, Lembra, Rembrandt. And it's a quick outline drawing. I'm using, as I say, the light blue. But because, because of course, it's watercolour pencils, as soon as I touch that outline, with water, it'll disappear. So for those of you that worry about pencil marks, pencil lines, which I don't, you needn't worry. And like I say, I'm not going to try and replicate every tree, just get the basic general shape going on. I'll do from that. And then at the base of here, I've got some grassy bits there. Coming down to, you can see just there, like a bit of sand or mud. <laughs> Coming down to the water's edge there. And a bit more there. I'm not pressing on too hard with this, but it doesn't really matter, to be honest. Just like I say, it will disappear when I put water on. And some more grasses there. And then another big tree here. Just a very simple outline. Big tree, that one. And there'll be a lot of colouring in going on in this. Afterwards, and these trees here are slightly more distant, so I'm not pressing on as hard with the pencil. I always say with watercolour pencils, it's a bit like drawing with a normal pencil, apart from its colours, obviously. <laughs> but if you want a, a strong colour, press on harder, like that. Look. If you want a weaker colour, don't press on as hard. Simple as that. About there is where the river ends. Disappear, should I say. And some more coming down here. And then coming out the top here. I'm gonna miss that bit out. Another bigger tree there. And there's lots of different shades of green going on in this as well. This bit down here, I'll leave this out until the end. And now I've got my outline drawing in. So all I need to do now is colour it in. And there's lots of different, you can see, lots of different tones of greens going on in that thing. But fortunately, in a tin of 24 pencils, I've got a lot of different greens. And I'll show you the, the difference. In this, I'm going to have the light coming from the left. It's a bit of a 
stationary light, to be honest. If, this, if that makes does that make sense, Kel? Yeah. Well, I know what I mean. Midday, is it? It's midday kind of thing. But I want it coming fairly strongly from the left. You can see I'm catching light here, here, and a bit out, out here as well. So I'm starting off. This one is, this is what I'm talking about. Silly names. This one's apple green. And it's a fairly light green. And as I say, if you want a strong colour, press on hard and get more pencil on. If you don't want it as strong, don't press on as hard. That's my apple green, bit of that down there as well. I'll have some of that over here in the distance. There's a lot of colouring in going on. You may find this a bit a little bit boring. In which case, fast forward. I don't mind. Oh dearie, dearie me. Bit there. But the thing, the beauty about watercolour pencils is, out on location, they're fabulous because you just take a tin of pencils with you. And if you don't want to paint on location, just take a tin of pencils with you and your paper and do your drawing out on location. Then come back and wet it and make it into a painting when you get back home. Fabulous for going on holiday as well. You just take a tin of pencils, sketch pad with you, sketchbook, whatever, and do all your drawings out on location. And when you get back home, or back from your holidays, wet them and make them into paintings. Instant memories. That was quite po poetic, that wasn't it? That was very deep. Oh, wasn't that deep because I wasn't pressing on too hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how we chortled. There's plenty of that here and there. And that's all apple green. Now, I'm going to go for a slightly darker one. And this one, I think that's moss green. Yes, moss green. See, the different tone of green. And this is just like a kid's colouring in book. You've done the outline drawing, now colour it in. And here, look, I'm pressing on a little bit harder, slightly darker colour look. You notice I'm not coming all the way to the bottom because I'm kind of like being aware of where I'm going to put the next green. Because when I look at a picture like this or when I'm out on location, I know what I want to make of the, of the scene or of the photograph. So I'm aware of what I'm doing all, all the time. I mean, it's a bit like a game of chess. I'm kind of like two or three, in my mind, I'm two or three strokes or moves away from where I am. Like that. Now, I'm not pressing on as hard. Here, look. It is a darker green, you can see, but I'm not pressing on as hard as I did there. Now, press on harder at the bottom here. As you can see, it's a darker colour down there. Not all the way. Now, in between the two sets of trees, those in the far, far distance and the middle distance, I'm pressing on a little bit harder there, so I've got more dark against that light there. Does all that make sense, Kel? Perfect. You just said something nice about what I said then. Mm -hmm. You should be careful. It'll be the last I'll say. I know. Now you can see, look, two different 
shaking between the two there. And again, press on hard down here. To an even darker green, so that's from moss green, that's my apple green. Now I've got what's that one called? Oh, sap green. Pressing on harder there, look. And hard down there. And not much of that into the distance. I don't want to darken the distance too much. Now, this is a very dark green, which is why it's called Night Green. <laughs> very dark. Nice and strong down here. But it's got a very blue tinge to it, that. It's lovely. So I'm putting that in between blocks of trees. So I've got really dark against the lighter green there. Now, quite a bit of that down here. And by the way, this, this tin of watercolour pencils that I'm using now um, these have been on the go now for probably five years. As you can see, they last a long time. But as I said earlier, protect the nibs. Don't be using pencil sharpness. Don't crumble them and make them weak at the end. Use a knife. And dark stuff in between some of those. Now you can see two different cl clumps of trees there, two different blocks. And I'll highlight that even more in a minute. More there. There's bound to be someone that complains on feedback that says, oh, that's scraping up the pencil on the paper. I mean, please, really? And you think I'm joking? That's the kind of stuff that you get when people give you feedback sometimes. But the majority of the time, it's really nice. But you get the whinges. You just look for something to complain about. Starting to make a bit of sense now, even though it's just scribbles, but we've now got Stronger, lighter, stronger, lighter, as we're going through the picture. Now I'm going to go in with Prussian blue. Always sounds odd. There we are, Prussian blue. Always sounds odd putting just blue in your trees. But it's not going to come out just blue. It is just going to add more depth. Pressing on hard there, look. Now I've got this light grass, sorry, grass up here. Actually, no, before I do the grass, I'm going to go in with, this is a, a, a yellow. Actually, it's called uh, lemon. <laughs> Some of the names aren't that bad then. No. I'm just putting that on some of the left-hand edges here. green even lighter and give it some real zing see that 
That look good, guy. Mm. Mm. Golly gosh. And everything. A few touches up there. Don't want much. Just to capture some light in the extreme top bits of those. A little bit better. Yeah. Now, for this grass down here, I'm going to start off with a bit of that lemon. Now, a little bit of apple green in there as well. It's more of a lighter, sorry, moss. Where's the apple? There we go. It's a bit of a lighter, grassier, gro sorry, grassier type green. Look, I'm not pressing on too heavy. And for some extreme light bits, there's nothing wrong, remember, with leaving the white of your paper showing through. There's no finer white than the white of your paper. A bit there. Now, a little bit of ochre. This one's golden ochre, I think it is. Yeah, gold ochre. There you go. And it's just going underneath there for that little sandy bit. And that will just highlight the base of the grass as well. Now, a little bit of the blue again, the Prussian blue, in between the two clumps of grass. Right and at the base of that. You see what I mean? It's just like a kid's drawing this. I'm just scribbling away. I'm colouring in <laughs> without the numbers. Yeah, that'll be all right. Here, on this one, I'm just going it straight in with the um, sap green. So bring that down. And a few overhangs which will go near the water. I'll get rid of this for the time being. And now some of that in here as well. Like I say, this is just the sap green all the way through there. And as I said, the grass down here, I'm going to leave that till the end, once I've got the water in. Now, a little bit of the night green. Coming up to the sap green and in between the two, look. Pressing on fairly hard there. And just a few touches of the yellow in there, the lemon, on the top there, look. But be aware of what's going to happen when you put the water on. I'm putting that in there, but I know there's a sharp edge between the two. But I know that once I put the water on, I'm going to blend those in and merge them in. And one colour will run into the next kind of thing. A few bits there and a few bits there. And a few bits on top of that. But once you've practiced with these a few times and had a bit of fun with them, 
it soon becomes, you soon get to know what's going to happen when you wet it. A little bit more, and a little bit of Prussian blue in there as well. Just now, this big tree here in the foreground, and I'm going to start off with the, with the lemon. That's not on there. Well, this one's facing the light, of course. So a few bits here. I'm taking this taller than when I actually drew it. I've just made my mind up as I was looking. Coming down here. And the paper I'm using, it's just my normal watercolour paper, the Langton Rough, 140 pound weight. It's not pre stretched. And you notice I haven't taped the sides, it's going to be more of a vignette type of thing. A big vignette. <laughs> you get a big vignette, bro. Do you get a big vignette? I think you do, don't you? Yeah, I'll just check it. Now, a little bit of the Apple green again. Pressing on harder now. Going into the yellow. Green, I think. Yes, a bit of moss green. Not everywhere. I'm going to keep plenty of light on this. And a little bit of the um, sap green. But not too much of it. And again, a little bit of the night. It's a little bit off-putting is that actually because when, when you first put it on but like i say you, you've got to know what happens once you get the water on and you only find that out by practicing with it a um, bit disconcerting because when you put it on look look it's very blue and you think you've got the wrong color but it makes a beautiful dark green trust me i'm an artist and it's there Now, just when you think you're finished, go to the darkest green, the true green, which is the sap green now. I'm just going to do a few bits here. This, as you'll probably have gathered, is the start of the reflections. And I'm just haphazardly putting the different greens in. I'm not looking too carefully about what's happening above as long as I get the greens in there. That. Now I'll have a little bit of the night green as well. And a few bits of that there as well in the distance. And a little bit of the lemon. Just be careful how much of that you put in there because it is very, very strong. That will do for that. That's all the drawing done and the colouring in done. Um, what remains now is to actually make that drawing into a painting. 
and for that, obviously, I need water. Um, there's different ways of wetting. You remember in watercolour, normal watercolour paints, I'm always going to pre-wet that area, the sky area first, before I put the sky on. With these, I'm not going to pre-wet the paper. What I am going to do is put a lot of water on the brush, but I'm not pre-wetting the paper. And I'm also not drawing on like I did with the trees, because otherwise you will end up with scratchy marks in the sky, and that's the last thing you want. So instead, another different way of using the pencils is to take the paint off the pencil with my brush. And I'm using my three quarter inch wash brush here, flat brush. Get the paint off and paint on them. That way you're gonna get a smooth sky. It's not gonna have hard lines in it. What colour are you using? Oh, get you. What I'm using is Prussian blue. Did you think I've forgotten that, did you? Yes. Well, probably because I have. <laughs> <laughs> Just keeping the brush loaded. There we go. Around the trees, kind of. When you're using a three-quarter inch brush like that, you've got control of what you're going around. Just use the sharp edge of the brush to go around areas, look. And it's easy enough then. But once I get the paint on, it is, forget about the idea of pencil, it is just watercolor. Treat it ex exactly like you would the normal sky. Wash out, squeeze out, take some clouds out. Keep just that. And there, a very, very simple sky, just with one colour, Prussian blue. Now, my sky's good and dry, only took a couple of minutes. And what I'm doing now is just wet the whole thing, but in stages, in sections. So I'm starting off with my number eight round brush and just wetting them and taking one colour into the other. And these, again, my normal watercolour brushes, Aquafine watercolour brushes. Tapping on, moving the paint around and softening it. This, as I said, if you're on holidays, if you're taking these on holidays, you just do your drawings out on location and then you can come back months later and wet it and make it into a painting. No time constraints on this. Now taking the darker blue into the lighter, moving it around, softening it. Leave a few little white bits of paper here and there. Move paint around a little bit, look. Now into the dark, into the darkness. Put that on there. And you can see what, what I mean now about this the night green. It is a definite green once you wet it. So don't be scared by it. I'm tapping on there. Now, as I've softened that and wet it, now I'm going to move it up, take it into the rest. Dabbing on here and there. And suddenly this scribbly drawing becomes a painting. Easy, isn't it? There. Now, I'll go to my three quarter inch brush. My flat brush again. Again, Aquafine brush. Wet it. Spread it around a little bit. Leave some light showing as well. But see what I mean? I'm doing it in sections. Background first, and then coming further forward. And this is when you start and get reward for all your scribbles. As soon as the water goes on. And again, bring the 
dark up. And spread it around a little bit. Even I went quiet for a second then, girl. Mm -hmm. Nice. Beg your pardon. <laughs> Don't laugh, you make, <coughs> you make the camera shake. And then into the one slightly closer. And you can see now where the lemon, the lemon yellow, comes into play because that's really capturing the light on the outer edge of the trees. And the same one here. See what I mean? This is the easy bit. This is the reward for all your scribbles. And plenty of water in this brush, by the way. And now I've captured plenty of light onto the outer edge. Now, once I come down into this dark stuff here, I want to split the brush a little bit. bits down there. And a bit of sand on the knees. Like so. And again, a few little bits of white paper showing. Now, before I come over to this side, I'm going to put the water in. So what I need for that is, again, a Prussian blue. But this time, a little bit of light red into it as well. Actually, it's not called light red in these, is it? What is it called? Venetian red. So this is another way of mixing. Instead of doing the drawing on there, again, I don't want scrapey, scratchy bits in the water. I want it smooth. So. Instead of mixing on the paper, like I've done here, I'm mixing on the pencil. So I've got my Venetian red, a little bit of that. Then the cobalt blue. More of that. Not cobalt blue, sorry, Prussian blue. You didn't correct me then, did you? No, I didn't. It's slow there. And I'm painting into the reflection so that I'm dragging the reflection into the water. Like so. Keep him mixing. Carefully there, and I'm leaving a little bit of white paper showing through in between the two, in between the water and the trees. And then smooth through. A bit more of that there. Just blue, just blue there. And now, I'll just give that a couple of minutes to dry before I start over the other side. Now, the water's not dried yet, look. Still a little bit wet there, look. But it's dry enough for me to carry on over here. 
So still with my three quarter inch brush, tapping on that. And because I've got the moss green coming out to this edge here, it's stronger than this stuff, this light stuff here. So it comes out a little bit further forward. Going into the dark. Soften that dark a little bit more in between the two. And now, what I'm going to do get a little bit of the uh, Prussian blue again and a little bit of the night green. I'm going to mix the two on the pencil, on the brush, sorry. And then just, yeah, that's right, and stipple as it comes down to the river there. I've got a kind of a, an overhang of tree, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean, Jane? I know what you mean. Willow. No, nothing like a willow, but that kind of thing. Like a willow. Tapping. I said to somebody recently, it's easily solved. Don't watch. <laughs> Don't think that's the answer they expected, but there we go. And I'm remembering that I've got some grass coming up here as well, or I will have. Now, still with that same colour, I'm just going to edge there, look. Nice sharp edge to a three quarter inch flat brush. There and there. It's effective, isn't it, girl? Very effective. That's what I thought. A little bit there. And I'm going to darken the water a little bit more there as well. And coming out with a few slopes. Is that a police sound there? Coming after you. Have they found out where you are? <laughs> and a few touches in here as well. Still with that same colour. Now, in with these grasses here, down at the bottom. And what I'm doing for that, Again, it's the yellow, the lemon, and the apple green, and a bit of blue, and some Venetian red, all oh, in that grass there. Look. For this, you've got to make sure the water is dry. So we'll start off with a bit of the Venetian red look. Don't want too much of it. Now, a little bit of the apple green. A 
And some of these strokes are relieving just as pencil strokes. I'll wet most of it, but some of them just as wet pencil. Dry pencils here. Now a little bit of the yellow. Now the darker green, the moss green there. Tall grasses there. Look. And again, wet that now. But as I say, leave some of them as just pencil strokes. Look at the way I'm using the brush look sharp. I'm not using it as a big stroke, I'm using the sharp look, sharp edge of it. Sounds a bit like Bob Ross then, doesn't it? There. Paint those little crews in now. And I'm going to have a little bit down there, and for that, I'm going to have the night green and the moss green. That's the night green look. Oh, that's not the night green. There we go, that's the night green. I'm just taking that off the pencil again. A few strokes in there. Now, more screen. I'm going to have to sharpen this after today. Flicking upwards, look. I'm just taking the paint off the pencil and flick upwards. And that! We'll more or less do that. And there we go. That's a rough representation of that. I've missed a little bit of that off and I've missed a little bit of that off. And that's about all. Um, but you can see the vibrant colours that you get in the watercolour pencil. I think they're fabulous. And the thing is, it's like I say, if you're, if you're going on holiday or you're going outdoors sketching, and you don't want to paint outdoors or you're scared of painting in front of people or these days sorry no it's not outdoors it's on plein air well i never paint on plein air i paint outdoors so if you're scared of people watching you or you haven't got the time to do an entire painting just do a drawing then come home at some other point and then make it into a painting by just adding water <laughs> just add water that's like a whiskey um but the thing is it's so versatile. You can do it when you want. When you've got the chance for a quick sketch, do a quick sketch. When you've got the chance to make it into a painting, make it into a painting. There's no time constraints and you can leave that on the paper, the drawing on the paper, for years and then come back and make it into a painting just by adding water. They are fabulous things. And the ones I use are, these are a mess, as you can see, but in their new form, that's what they like. And these are Lyra Rembrandt. And they come in, we, well, we have them in 24 tins and a 12 tin. There are tins of pencils that have got hundreds in them. And there's some really fancy fold out boxes with hundreds of different colors. What do you need them for? <laughs> if you're painting landscapes, 24 tin is plenty. You can mostly do with a, a tin of 12 as well. But with the 24, you've just got those few extra colours which are really useful in landscapes. For the books, we've got lots of watercolour books. But these are the ones I've picked out. Those, that one, very handy for big washes in watercolour. But these two, these are really good selling books. Um, watercolour Rescue 
and the pocketbook, Charles Evans' pocketbook. And they're in watercolours, but in this one there's also watercolour pencils. And and I think they're about eight quid each, I think, or eight fifty yeah. or something like that. We sell them both, well you can buy them either, but we sell them both for fifteen pounds. Um, and so there's one for showing you how to do it, and there's one for showing you how, how to rectify your mistakes once you've made them. Because we all do. We all do. The paper I'm using, again, the Lampton Rough. And we sell it in two formats. Two sizes, sorry. Lampton Rough, fabulous paper. You don't need to pre-stretch or mess about with it. Chop a sheet in half or use a full sheet or whatever. Tape it to your board, slap water on. And it's never going to wobble and give you a lot of grief. And when I take the tape off, it will all will dry out totally flat as well. So hopefully you've enjoyed this one and we'll be making another one in just ordinary watercolours next. So if you want any of the stuff that I'm using, I'm waffling a bit here, aren't I? Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. The brushes I'm using, I only, I only use four brushes in total anyway. But for this one, I only use two really. The three quarter inch flat and the number eight round. Again, Aquafine brushes, fabulous brushes. You can, you can abuse them till the cows come home and they're never gonna let you down. I love these things. This set is about seven years old, I think. So, and they get this kind of treatment every day of the week. So, enjoy your painting, have a go with this one. And remember, don't worry about it, practice with it. Thank you very much.